All right, everyone, time for the big news of the day. That's the uh, Carter Page documents. Some of it was obtained by Judicial Watch, and they put it out for public consumption. Now, they're heavily redacted. But Judicial Watch has really been on the forefront, along with Veritas and a few other groups, and WikiLeaks, oddly enough, uh, of trying to have some degree of government accountability. The real problem is that even if they're forced to release documents, they can redact them however they want which means that you're not getting the full picture. I think they shouldn't be able to do that. I think there should be things that are just topically classified should simply fall out of classified status unless there's a significant exonerating factor as to why they shouldn't uh, after a certain period of time, like after a year or two. That's what I think should happen. That way the, the American people know a little bit more about what goes on within the intel agencies, within you know the intel committee and all of these other things where something classified might be circulated. The Carter Page documents, though, are very, very worrisome to me for two main reasons. Ignore Carter Page himself. It appears that despite the, the evidence they had of Russian collusion, he hasn't been charged as far as I know. They haven't indicted him, even though they conducted extensive surveillance, which means, by the way, he probably didn't collude and he's probably going to turn around and sue the U.S. government. Good luck to him in trying to do so, but if you win, he'd be you know, probably legend. The first problem that I have is this. This article spells it out too. They're like, well, this shows that the Steele dossier wasn't the only piece of evidence that was used, which was a claim by some Republicans. They're like, hey, you conducted extensive surveillance on multiple targets within an active presidential campaign based on something that we now know has been more or less completely discredited. The Steele dossier is largely false. Steele can claim that it was in good faith. The FBI can claim some of it might kind of sort of be true. Some of it is provably false. My problem, though, is this. Other evidence was presented. Good, good for you for having it. Why was the dossier that you should have vetted and known was false? It was so over the top you should have known it was op research, but it was included anyway. Why wasn't it discluded from this bundle of, of material that was used in the application for the FISA warrant? I'll tell you why, because it's self-evident. The way the Steele dossier worked is that a, a, a slimy individual, Steele, was compiling in order to make money a dossier for as opposition research by injecting things online and then reporting on them and then taking that report rolling it back in as though it was evidence he himself was creating the evidence that he was submitting it's just a way for him to make money the problem is when the Jeb Bushites that were conducting that research folded, they then made money selling it to the Clinton campaign. And the Clinton camp and the DNC fronted it to partisan FBI agents who then presented it to the FBI at large as though it was true, despite the fact that they had to have known it was op research because they had just gotten it from the Clinton campaign. Then they fronted it to the FISA court along with apparently other info and it was actually, it was looked at and it was accepted as evidence. But we now know that it's evidence of nothing because it was false. The mere fact that it was bundled, regardless of what other evidence there was, is troublesome to me. That it was taken seriously by an intel agency at high levels, and that it wasn't even questioned by the FISA court. The other problem I have is this. The FISA court is a rubber stamping apparatus. They reject very, very few of the applications for warrants that they're given by the intel agencies. They operate outside of normal judicial bounds. You can't cross-examine them in the normal way. You can't present counter-evidence in the normal way. You can't call witnesses forth. You can't question the FISA court. It's not administered as a true judicial entity. It's overseen directly at the executive level and at the legislative level. It's not a true judicial body. And yet it's capable of bypassing the Fourth Amendment normally. I can remember, 15 years ago or so, when people were up in arms about the fact that such an apparatus existed, they said, this sounds like it was basically around the same time that people were worried about the existence of a shadow government. The idea that there were people that weren't part of the normal elected process that nonetheless could step in and take command in case, you know, basically after 9-11 people were worried about Armageddon or, or nuclear war. Uh, there, and then Dick Cheney and Bush came out and said, don't worry, there's a shadow government, so if we, you know, get randomly killed... There are still people to take command, and people are like, well, who are these shadow government members? Wouldn't they have a reason? It's sort of like, you know, oh, I've got a million-dollar life insurance policy. If I have one corrupt relative, they might try to shoot me or, or, you know, make sure that I drown in the bathtub tomorrow. It could be a problem. That same logic was carried over to the, to the concept of a shadow government, FISA courts, and all of this stuff. And they're like, yeah, it made us a little uncomfortable. Where's the outrage? 
Is it because now all of a sudden you think that Donald Trump is a Russian agent, he's doing espionage, he's a puppet, so now it's okay? Well, those FISA courts routinely violate the Fourth Amendment rights of American citizens. It's not just people within the political process. Think what you will about Trump and all these others. The courts still exist and they're still rubber stamping warrants. Which is more likely, in my estimation, which is more likely? That every FISA warrant is properly issued, the evidence is actually there, and, and a normal court would accept it? Or that the FISA court is applied to specifically because these are high-profile, classified cases in which evidence is lacking? I think the latter. I think the fact that they rubber stamp 99% of what they're given to rubber stamp is troubling. I think it's troubling because I don't think that the intel apparatus of the U.S. is so effective that they have actually properly identified guilt in all of those cases, probable cause to go and then find actual tangible evidence to charge people. I think that at least some of the time they're dead wrong. I think Carter Page is one of those situations. Meanwhile, everyone's talking about this supposed Russian agent. She hasn't, she, she's uh, an accused Russian agent. She hasn't been found guilty of a crime. They haven't put her in jail. She hasn't gone to trial. They're saying, oh, well, she basically fucked her way to the top in the NRA, and then the Treasury is covering for the NRA with their donor list and not forcing them to disclose all their donors and stuff. What are you talking about? This is starting to sound so much like a James Bond movie. Don't you think that's a little bit odd? A little bit mysterious? Now, who am I going to trust? Am I going to trust a bunch of people who thought the Steele dossier was real and who operate in total opacity and don't have any sort of disclosure required to the American people? Or am I just going to assume that because there's no actual evidence I'm being given, that these people are innocent? No, I think that the guilty party, the main uh, party that was guilty of anything, was ultimately Manafort. They've, they're giving Tony Podesta immunity. I wonder why they're giving him immunity to testify. It's not because they want to shaft Manafort. They can already do that. They've got evidence of money laundering. They've already got the evidence they need to put Manafort in jail. They're giving him immunity so that they can give him immunity because they don't want to have to put Tony Podesta in jail because then people would snap because they would realize it was a bipartisan money laundering scheme that involved the Podesta group, one step removed from the Clinton campaign. Wouldn't that be terrible? Wouldn't it be really, really terrible if the American people knew that's what happened? Yeah, I think that people would be a little bit upset. People on the left specifically, I think that would be pretty bad before the midterms. Much better to give him immunity so that he doesn't have to incriminate himself or anything. It'd be funny. But yeah, uh, it's, it's a clusterfuck. The FISA courts themselves shouldn't even exist. They don't perform a proper judicial function the way a warrant is supposed to be, according to the Constitution. It's supposed to be specific, constrained, prefaced upon proper evidence, not a piece of op research. The fact that that was even included should trouble people. People should be up in arms. They should be angry that this happened. They should be angry. Not, not look at the Russian collusion, political corruption, whatever. No. The fact that something that was provably false was taken for real by people who were just texting back and forth about stopping Trump anyway during the Clinton email investigation that this was fronted to the FISA court and still accepted despite being provably read should trouble you. You should be a Democrat should be troubled about it as much as a Republican. Who's to say this can't happen to the next Obama that comes along? The intel agencies are headed by people who just don't fucking like him. They're always talking about how Republicans run these intel agencies. Don't you see the problem there? Don't you see a little bit of a difficulty in reconciling this with uh, supporting the FISA court if you're a Democrat? By the way, don't you see that it proves that there are some never Trumpers, just <laughs> bitter partisans who just don't like him because he's essentially a business Democrat maverick who's gone rogue? And who's constantly threatening to, uh, you know, drain the swamp and stuff. No, I think it's about money at the end of the day. That's about all. Peace out.